All right. I have layered up my six layers that make up this image. Let me just build them from the background so you can see. Starts with the universe. Then I have this nice global sunset. I'm not going to bother trying to erase that out because honestly, all I have to do to blend those is use a blending mode and opacity, right? And then I have the trees in the background. I'm going to end up selecting all of this white mist and letting this background come through which should look pretty cool. A, a quick preview of that will be done just with opacity. But the trees will all be solid in their opacity, but that's going to take a lot of selecting that we'll get into in the next step. On top of that, let me take that back to full opacity. I have the sulfur pool. The sulfur pool is covering up way too much right now. What I want is for this to have trees growing out of it and in front of it, right? And to replace the ground of this layer. So that will all be merged. To get a sense of that, I can play with the opacity of the sulfur pool layer. But we don't want to be lazy compositors where everything is just melded by being low opacity. right? We don't want it to look like a hazy dream. We want it to look like a believable landscape. So that's going to take some careful selecting. And then the foreground elements are a little bit easier. This will be up here. I'll just clean it up. And these will be here. I'll just clean them up. And then I need to transition between the two. So I have that overlap, right? Where I might make it so that rock actually makes a little cave right here, or a little opening, so that the water flows from back here down underneath and through. And luckily, I've got that overlap of that moss. You can see when I play with opacity that that will all work. So it's important at this stage to have enough overlap between elements so you're not going to have any empty holes. And you can always adjust your sizes. You can always warp, stretch, as long as you've got the, the resolution. If I zoom in, you can see the full quality of this resolution. It's so full you can see spider webs in the mushrooms. Right? It's the advantage of using Pixabay. But you'll also notice that some of these are at different focus levels, right? Like these rocks here are noticeably less in focus than the foreground rocks. So that's going to help dictate kind of how everything is set up. But I think it's going to work. So before I get to cleanly cutting things out, I don't need to just take these colors and this lighting as it is. Instead, I want to go back to my original sketch and my original intentions for it, for this landscape. And that was for it to feel colorful and, and uh, mossy and sulfurous at dusk and dangerous, muggy, and beautiful. So I'm not there yet. You know, this just looks like a pleasant hike through Seattle. So what I can do is control the lighting and the color of each of these layers. You can always make things less colorful as well, but I don't want anyone to make a grayscale or a sepia tone landscape, just because that's not as much fun, right? Though it's an easy way to, to hide compositing. But if you ever saw the, I think it was 1994 Godzilla movie, where everything was just bluish gray and in heavy rain the whole time. It's disappointing when you want to see the, the imaginative work there. So in order to adjust these, I'm going to move from the, the first layer, the foreground layer on back. So I'm going to start with the mushrooms. And I'm going to go to image adjustments. These are called direct adjustments. You need to know how to use three of these direct adjustments. They are levels, which will adjust the lights and the darks. Everything in this first little drawer is about lights and darks. They all do the same kind of things with different tools. Levels, to me, is the most user-friendly and yet 
diverse enough tool for lights and darks. When you get to be professionals, you can go to curves, but curves are, are wildly misused in Photoshop. So levels makes a little bit more sense. So we're going to use levels. So levels adjust lights and darks. You can think of it as brightness and contrast as long as you use levels instead of brightness contrast. Levels will allow you to adjust three different tones of light within the pixels of your layer. The mid-tones is where you always want to start. The mid-tones is the gray triangle in the middle. The white triangle shows you the white pixels within that layer. The black shows you the black pixels. If you move these, these are called sliders. If you move them, it will change the limit. So by moving that white slider to the middle, you can see that now what used to be a middle gray in the image is now a bright white. The problem with that is that is called blasting out. So everything that used to have variation in tone is now solid white. And so if I were to hit OK, that would mean I could never get the edges of that mushroom back, right? Because they all got swallowed up by white. Same thing with black. You see these nice black shadows, but you see how there's texture in there. Even on the projector, you can see that there's something there, even though the projector already contrasts it. If I take the black slider, which are the shadows, and I push it, it doesn't take long before everything turns black. That means I don't have that pixel content anymore to play with. So the safest way to use levels is not to touch the white or the black slider. The one to play with is the mid-tone slider, where you can shift the overall lighting lighter or darker. I'm going to shift it a little bit lighter because there's a lot of shadow in that photo already. It doesn't take a lot of moving it to the right to see where I'm losing content. But if I shift it to the left, I'm expanding the amount of, of lighter tones and not losing anything. That's what I'm going to do. Underneath those sliders are something called the output levels. This is where you can limit how dark or how light the image gets. This doesn't make sense to use right now because I want a full range. But later on, if I want it to look a little bit hazier, I can say, I want the brightest whites in this image to actually be like a 20% gray. Or I want the darkest darks in this image to actually be like an 80% gray. So those are the output levels. So we're just going to play with that mid-tone slider. That's all we need. Don't mess with the channels. We want to keep it on full RGB. We'll be learning about that later. So I say OK. Now, that is what's called a direct adjustment because I just changed the pixels in the layer. The pixels are different than they were one step before. If I want to see if I like the change I made, I can hit Command-Z. And you can see what a big jump that is. And then I can go forward in my history or hit Shift Command Z. Oh no, actually, on this new version of Photoshop, you just hit Command Z and it will toggle back and forth. No, it doesn't. Sorry, you do you used to. Now you do Command Z, and if you want it to go back, you do Shift Command Z to move forward. So I move back one, and then Shift Command Z to move forward. And I like it better. Do you guys like it better? Did levels make a big difference? Good. So now we move on to the next step. And if you ever are unsure about this, you can always make a duplicate of the levels, do the direct adjustments, and then see if you want to keep the duplicate or not. Now I'm going to go to image, and I'm done with the lights and darks. Now I want to play with the color tools. We have two different color tools. One is subtle, and to me, the best adjustment tool in Photoshop. And one is, is kind of more heavy-handed and sometimes necessary. The first is color balance. So once we do levels, now we go to color balance. Color balance is about the temperature of the lighting. So this photo was taken under kind of diffuse midday lighting. There's a lot of green in that forest. That green is reflecting up into the color of the mushroom. So the mushrooms are slightly yellow and blue in their color temperature, right? I want them to pop a little bit more. I want more of a rainbow with the reds and the oranges. So what I'm going to do is just only with the midtones to begin with. 
That's a theme. Play with the midtones first. They're the safest. I'm going to push the sliders towards yellow and away from blue. If I do it too much, I'll lose most of my blues. So I'm just going to push them a little bit to the sides I want. A little bit towards yellow and a little bit towards red. Just a little bit. If I go too far, then they become kind of sepia toned and they're not going to blend well with other layers. So I'm just pushing it a little. If I want to get into the highlights, I can start adjusting those individually as well, maybe even getting into magentas. But if you do highlights, then this is my sincere recommendation, both as a digital artist and a photographer. You then want to go to the shadows and you want to do the opposite. So if I shifted it towards magenta in the highlights, I want to go to the shadows and shift it a little bit towards green because that's how light works. If one color light is the light source, then the shadow is going to be the opposite spectrum of light. And that's how you keep it looking fully dimensional. So in the highlights, I shifted it towards red. So in the shadows, I want to shift the shadows towards cyan. And yes, it kills a little bit of that warm glow, but it's going to keep it looking more believable and make it so I can blend it with other layers better. And then in the highlights, if I shifted it towards yellow, I want to shift the shadows towards blue. And if you don't want to worry about that balance of highlights and shadows, just stick to the midtones. That's priceless color editing advice. All right. Now, as always, I could use Command Z and I can see. So this is where we started. This is with levels and now, now this is with color balance. Do I like what color balance did to it? What do you guys think? If I'm going for colorful and kind of weird and maybe a little dangerous, this is going in the right direction. Okay, that might be where I stop. But there's one other adjustment you can play with when you want major change. And that is image adjustments, hue saturation. It sits right on top of color balance. I do it last because it's the big guns. Hue saturation is how I can turn these into psychedelic mushrooms very easily, just by sliding the hue. The hue changes the whole visual spectrum. It's like how a mantis shrimp would see this, these mushrooms, right? All these things at once. But you can see it's very powerful. So if you want to shift the hue, generally you just want to warm it up a little bit or cool it down a little bit. The way this is different than color temperature is this will shift every color in your layer that much in a new direction. So if I want to warm it up a little bit, I'm just going to move that hue slider to the right. But that kind of undoes all of the, the reds that I was working on because it's pushing them towards yellow. If I want to cool them down, I push it to the left and that makes them a little bit too red, too purplish. So I'm going to keep that right around zero maybe negative one, if anything. The one that's most helpful in hue saturation is the actual saturation. This is the only adjustment tool that actually directly affects the saturation of your pixels. Saturation is the intensity of the color. So if I like these pink mushrooms that I have, but I want them to be more intense, I up the saturation. Now, if you up it too much, just like using levels and going too bright or too dark, you lose pixel difference, right? So everything in moderation. Maybe I push it just that much. Now the problem is, as I push those reds, look what happens to the yellows. They become these neon greens. And that's going to make it harder to blend with other things. So what I can do is I can actually limit what I affect. So where it says master here, I can say, oh, I only want to affect the reds. So this is really targeted. So now I can just up the saturation of the reds in the image. And I can actually take the cyans and I can up the saturation of those as well. And now you see how I have the strong green still? While still having the strong mushroom. I would leave lightness alone. Lightness is like levels and limits. If you need it here, it's, there's a better tool for it somewhere else. But you can adjust your individual 
saturations. Like I might take the saturation down on the yellow a little bit and maybe even shift its hue. 